today's book review is for a book entitled Lost Connections. This book was written by Johan Harry in 2018. The theme of the book is uncovering the real causes of depression and the unexpected solutions. As I do this review, there are several cases that have been reported of suicide in Kenya where I live. And many people have attributed these suicidal cases to depression. Most of the suicide notes that have been left have been suggesting that people have been committing suicide because of marital issues and family challenges. We also note that in our country, many people are on, on antidepressants and others are on therapy. So I just got interested in reading this book and I thought of sharing with you. The author says that after taking his first antidepressant at the age of 18, he wanted to know why, together with other millions of people of the world, both in the US and in other parts of the world, they still experience depression despite medication and therapy. The author noticed that he did not get well after taking the first dose of antidepressants, but he continued to go for therapy on and on and on. So he decided to research to know why, why do people get depression? And for a total of three years, he says that he traveled more than 40,000 miles across the US and he interviewed more than 200 people just to have a deeper understanding of depression and anxiety. In his own findings, he found that depression can result from traumatic experiences. It can also be because of toxic environment or some chemical imbalances in the brain. And so highly, he, in this book he reports on the challenges of the traditional biological model of depression and offers some meaningful strategies to help those people who suffer from depression to reconnect with the status and the respect they require to give their lives full meaning. Uh, there are some key takeaways from this book. One is that depression and anxiety are different forms of disconnection. It could be that someone is yearning for something people need, but they are missing in their lives. Another key takeaway is that biology or the environment, or sometimes a combination of both, they can cause mental depression. And this is worse and more complicated than having a bad brain chemistry. Uh, another thing to note is that he suggests that a possible solution to depression and anxiety is to reconnect to what a person has lost. He also suggests that depression can result from disconnection from the natural world. And he also says that depression fuels a disconnection between meaningful work and meaningful values. Another thing he says is that childhood trauma may be a source of depression and anxiety for so many people. And he also says in the book that a hopeful future lies in the human reconnection to status and to respect. Uh, Harry says that biology, environment, or a combination of both can cause mental depression. And he says this is more complicated than having a bad brain chemistry. By biology, he talks about your genetics, your DNA. It means that people can actually adopt or, or can get depressed because of their genetic makeup. If someone comes from a family line where people tend to have depression, such a person can easily succumb to the same. The mainstream scientific community identified two kinds of depression. This is endogenous and reactive. This is according to the world of science. Uh, this is some type of malfunction of the brain or body causes endogenous depression. A person's environment or personal experiences can cause reactive depression. In the 1970s, the author says that there was an anthropologist called George Brown and another therapist and a researcher, Harris, and they interviewed women in Camberwell, those are the working uh, class women in South London. 114 of these women had a diagnosis of depression. 344 women from the same area did not have it. So the two researchers, researchers started both groups for a year. They interviewed the women multiple times, asking if they had experienced severe losses or negative events in the year before they, become depre they became depressed. 
the researchers labeled negative events as difficulties, you know, the normal difficulties of life, a difficult career, a difficult marriage and stuff. And the positive events were recognized as stabilizers. Women later diagnosed with depression were three times more likely to have had long-term sources of stress in the year before their diagnosis. Women with stabilizers, these are the good experiences in life, were much less likely to become depressed even in the face of negative events. The two researchers, this is Brown and Harris, they found no difference between women with endogenous depression and women with reactive depression. Later, scientists agreed that environmental factors contribute to anxiety and depression. Today, people often categorize mental distress under an umbrella of biological, psychological, and social factors, which is called the biopsychosocial model. Genetics and biology play a role in depression and anxiety. Neuroplasticity is your brain's way of reshaping itself based on your life experiences. Your brain constantly eliminates synapses that you don't use and enhances those that you do use. Uh, another thing that I picked in this book is where he says that depression and anxiety are different forms of disconnection. And this form of disconnection is something where someone is yearning for something people need but are missing in their lives. In the 1970s, Physician uh, Marmot chose to study the British civil service because it lacked common variables related to depression. British civil servants are educated, they are well paid, and since they have desk jobs, not in physical danger. They earn salaries according to a strict pay scale, divided into grades based on responsibility. This is just to support the idea that when work is enriching, life is fuller and life has meaning. And that spills over into the things you do outside work. What are the religious activities that you do? What are the social activities that you do? Do they give meaning to your life? When you don't have meaning in your life, you are likely to be more depressed. And this is something that is telling you as an individual or us as readers of this book. If you want to avoid depression in your life, ensure that you do work that gives meaning to your life. Don't just work for pay, don't just work for money, ensure that whatever you do adds meaning to your life. And so from this, uh, the author also says that a possible solution to depression and anxiety is a reconnection to what has been lost. There was a Harvard professor named uh, Robert, and he documented the decline in communal activities such as playing sports, singing in choir, being part of a volunteer group, and the like. He found that between 1985 and 1994, involvement in community organizations decreased by 45%. And it is also during this period that cases of depression were on the rise. Feeling lonely isn't the same as being alone. You feel more alone when you're not sharing with another person something that matters to both of you. If there is something that is important to two of you, you need to share, you need to discuss because that is the only way that you will avoid depression. And many people have assumed that social media fills the void of working with others when we know it is not true. Digital connections can't replace the value of in-person connections. Many people suffer loneliness and they feel disconnected despite connecting with others in the virtual space. Another thing that was noted is that mental health problems are more prevalent and severe in the cities than in the rural areas that if you go to the agricultural areas or the greener rural areas, fewer people will be depressed than in the cities. And this is to support the earlier theory that the author had suggested that the environment plays a key role in depression. The other thing you notice is that in the countryside, there are greener areas, there is nature. And when people connect with nature, they are less likely to be, be depressed compared to the people living in urban areas where there are only buildings and architectural designs and very, very uh, few trees and also very op few opportunities to interact with nature. Uh, so scientists thought, thought that this might be due to other factors, such as a stronger community in the village, lower crime rates in the village, less pollution, and other factors. But different British studies cleaned out these effects. 
and it was discovered that with or without a green space, you can be healthy and you can live without depression. Another thing the author says is that people with depression become disconnected from the natural world. And one solution to depression would be for people to spend more time in nature and to interact more with other people. For example, he encourages patients suffering from depression or other mental health issues to volunteer to turn a weed filled wastelands into a beautiful garden. Disconnection from meaningful values can cause depression and anxiety, you know? There is an index that measures human values and a survey of 316 students found that the more materialistic people were much more likely to have anxiety or depression if they throw away their values in search of money. And this is something that is so common in our country where people are willing to do anything that will get them money and this study shows that the more, the more you throw away your values, the more you are likely to feel empty and this is likely to cause a depression. Since the 1960s, psychologists have identified two motivating forces that drive your life. Those forces are intrinsic motives, which are found from within, and extrinsic motives that are found from external values. Neither type of motive on its own completely drives a person's behavior. Pursuing intrinsic goals makes you happier and less anxious and less depressed. These are the motives that come from within, not just for pain. The more materialistic and extrinsically motivated you become, the more depressed you will be. The results are the same regarding anxiety. And according to Casas' work, uh, anxiety will be more prevalent in people who are always looking forward to do something for pay. But when motivation is from within, intrinsic motivation, there are less, uh, the individuals are less likely to report cases of anxiety and depression. The other thing that I picked from this book is the relationship between childhood trauma and depression. The higher the levels of childhood trauma that one grew up with, the more the cases of depression will be reported. This study that was done by Kaiser showed that people who suffer from obesity they had higher incidence of childhood trauma, which led to depression and anxiety, which they comforted themselves using food. Because the only time they feel happy is when they're eating. And so like if you're a parent bringing up your children, it means that you should reduce the incidence of cases of trauma in those children so that they can have whole mental health and avoid any cases of depression. Yes, and so what is the final thing from this book? Human reconnection to status and respect is a solution to depression and anxiety. It doesn't matter the challenges a person is facing in life. If they feel they have good status in the society and they are respected by people in the Yasako, they are not likely to be depressed. Yeah, so, so that is it. Um, let's help our children in these times where so many cases of depression have been reported let's help one another let's do work that is meaningful let's look for intrinsic motivation towards our jobs and not just extrinsic motivation let's have values in whatever we are doing and when we are raising our children let's avoid cases of trauma so that they'll have whole lives when they are up that is it for me from today have a good one bye